Good morning. My name is Miriam Cunningham. I'm pleased to share insights into M Health for Africa ongoing results during the Helena 2018 scientific program. In the context of Sustainable Development Goal 3, governments are working towards achieving universal health coverage. This requires a number of pillars to be put in place to support people-centered health services, including e-health strategies with a regulatory and data privacy environment, skills development programs, and electronic health records. WHO defines an electronic health record as being real-time patient-centered records that provide immediate and secure information to authorized users. EHRs typically contain a patient's medical history, diagnosis and treatment, medications, allergies, immunizations, as well as radiology images and laboratory results. In terms of the current state of play, despite progress being made in introducing electronic patient records in larger hospitals in urban areas, paper-based registries are the default data capture method in resource-constrained urban, rural, and deep rural health centers in Ethiopia, Kenya, Malawi, and South Africa. Prior to engaging with mHealth for Africa, none of the participating health centers had access to a complete electronic patient record system. And the intervention clinics in Ethiopia, Kenya, and Malawi were not using electronic medical devices at the point of care. One of the driving forces in increasing the use of EHRs in Africa has been around addressing requirements for specific donors and programs, including HIV and tuberculosis. However, there is now growing awareness that using silo applications is not sustainable for a variety of reasons, including data fragmentation and duplication of effort. MHealth for Africa is co-designing a modular, adaptable and extensible multilingual framework that integrates electronic medical records and electronic health record functionality with medical sensors and data visualization tools. It supports the automatic counting of monthly program indicators based on individual patient records and SMS appointment notifications. It supports the adoption of technology at the point of care. MHealth for Africa is co-funded as a research and innovation action by the European Commission under Horizon 2020. MHealth for Africa is focused on supporting Sustainable Development Goal 3. It aims to assist primary health care facilities to increase the quality and impact of care through timely capture of information, systematic storage of important data points in the patient record, and improved follow-up. Frequency of contact with a focus on prevention through the use of state-of-the-art technologies at the point of care. Accuracy and quality of monthly aggregate program indicators and access to educational materials for clinic staff and patients to improve skills. It is co-designed with ministries of health, district health offices clinic managers and health workers in primary health care facilities in resource-constrained urban, rural and deep rural environments in Ethiopia, Kenya, Malawi and South Africa. It's focused on providing evidence of the role of technological innovation to support people-centred health services in the context of universal health coverage. In terms of methodology, from a technical development perspective, design, science, research techniques have been applied and an agile development process is being implemented. This supports regular interaction with policymakers, district and clinic managers and health workers as part of the co-design process to validate each iteration and prioritize functionality and data sets for subsequent iterations. Qualitative data collection and ethnographic observation was used during the needs requirements and baseline study and during the platform validation phases. mHealth for Africa has secured the necessary ethical approval required in each country. 
The intervention health facilities are agreed with the Ministry of Health and the District Health Offices. They're currently in Northern Gondor in the Mara region of Ethiopia, Bungoma County in Western Kenya, Zamba Machina districts in Southern Malawi, and the Eastern Cape in South Africa. One of the research objectives for mHealth for Africa was to design a patient record framework leveraging some of the functionality of District Health Information System 2, DHIS2, and Tracker Capture. The rationale for this was based on a significant number of ministries of health in Africa, including Kenya, Malawi, and South Africa, are using DHIS2 as the back-end HMIS for monthly aggregate data. As a result of participation in mHealth for Africa, the Ministry of Health in Ethiopia is now transitioning to DHIS2 as the HMIS for aggregate data. DHIS has two main modules, a statistical processing module for routine reporting of numeric health data from health facilities, and a single event module tracker for individual patient information. To date, the majority of DHIS installations are focused on statistical health data, so monthly aggregate program indicators to support policy development and, and health decisions. It was therefore a conscious decision for mHealth for Africa to research whether a patient-focused application could be built on top of DHIS2 to support a consistent data model to store and retrieve patient data as well as support automatic aggregate monthly indicators to be generated based on this patient data. Based on limitations identified with the tracker capture application, mHealth for Africa has developed a custom application and user interface using Angular JavaScript that interacts with the mHealth for Africa data model set up in DHIS2 via a web API. mHealth for Africa has designed the data model for each program based on a superset of data points required for the four countries and configured it in DHIS2. The data model determines the program structure with the stages, sections and rules. This allows a significant amount of the data model related work to be implemented without programming. The mHealth for Africa application has been programmed to dynamically render the data model for each program. This is very important in terms of maintenance and ease of modifying and adding programs going forward. It significantly reduces the requirement for access to scarce technical resources. The functionality and user interface of the mHealth for Africa platform has evolved over time based on feedback received to the alpha prototype and the initial iterations of the beta platform and user requirements. The initial use case selected for the alpha and the first iteration of the beta was based on antenatal care. This was selected for two primary reasons. First, it's quite complex, thus providing demanding terms of reference for data collection requirements. And secondly, it's a free service in most African countries, which will impact many people due to the high level of demand. Detailed analysis was undertaken in terms of national protocols, clinical workflow and reporting requirements to prepare a common framework addressing the needs of the four intervention countries. Based on the pre-beta validation and the validation of the first iteration of the beta platform during 2017, it was very clear that health centres require a health information system that allows any patient to be re registered once and then over a period of time enrolled in multiple programmes depending on their health conditions. This resulted in a re-architecture of the mHealth for Africa beta application as the data model structure. The functionality that's currently being validated in the health centres includes, from a clinic perspective, the ability to set up, view and edit health workers as system users, and assign access rights based on specific programme responsibilities. Health workers can add, view and edit a patient record, 
and they can search the patient list based on their access rights. They can add, view and edit patient appointments by program, search the appointment list and uh, create SMS notifications for upcoming program appointments. From a patient-centric perspective, we've developed a patient profile which provides access to demographic information. It provides access to program-specific information, appointments, risk factors, and visualization of program-specific readings. In terms of the programs that are currently being validated, they include medical history, maternal health care, family planning, cervical cancer screening. Child under five includes growth and nutrition, childhood illnesses, immunization, vitamin A and deworming tuberculosis, ART, and general outpatient department. The health workers can access patient records by program. I'm now going to briefly show a demo of some of the mHealth for Africa functionality. One of the practical challenges that mHealth for Africa faced is the requirement to be able to support two different calendars the Ethiopian calendar and the Gregorian calendar. We've addressed this through a data conversion within the custom application so that the Ethiopian version displays the Ethiopian calendar while the dates are stored in DHIS2 as the Gregorian calendar. This allows us to maintain one code base. The version I'm now demonstrating is for a health facility in Ethiopia. When the health worker logs in, they're shown the health centre that they are accessing the data for, and based on the programme rights, they have access to different programmes. In this case, I'm logged in as the clinic manager, so I have access to the programme indicators. I have the ability to set up healthcare workers as system users and assign programme rights. I can view the appointments for the whole clinic, and I can access patients for all the programmes. If I log in as a nurse with specific program rights, then the, my view of the patient list is automatically rendered based on those rights. So I can search for a patient, then I find the patient I want, and I click and go view profile. So now I'm going to show you a number of different programs. So when you click on a patient, you come to the patient profile page. And this is presented as a dashboard. It provides access to the demographics of the person. We can access, we can edit this by viewing the, few, the full profile. We have access to the risk factors, a patient overview, which is specific to the program, the stages related to that program and, and reports. We see a view and we can add appointments. In this case, this lady has attended the full cycle of maternal health, and we have access to dynamic rendering of vital signs. So here you can see the blood pressure reading for each of the stages that the lady has attended. And this is dynamically rendered as um, they attend the things. And this shows you the readings from the oximeter. In this case now, we're looking at a child so we always have access at the top of the screen to the programs that the person's registered for. We have access to the name, the date of birth, the medical record number, and in the case of the maternal program, the expected date of delivery. So here we see the details of the child. The father is already registered in the clinic, so we've linked to the father's record. Then we see the appointments that the child has been registered for. We see the risk factors, the patient overview is program dependent. So in this case, it shows us the last data for growth and nutrition for this child. And it shows us an overview of what immunizations they've received to date. Then under, under stages, this is specific to the program, the data points that can be collected. So in the case of the child under five, we can collect data about the um, at birth consultation the growth in nutrition, childhood illnesses, immunization, vitamin A and deworming. And these are all set up as repeatable stages. So you add the data when the child comes to the clinic. Um, in the case of the child under five, we've 
configures the WHO graphs. So weight for age, weight for height, length for age. And these are dynamically rendered. In this case, this gentleman is set up for the TB program. So we can add TB screening. And this shows us an overview of the data that was collected. If the person is unfortunate enough to have TB, then we can add the, each visit they come for. And if they move to category four, we can add a consultation for category four. We have vital sign readings for the, for the vital points. And here we shows us an overview of his condition. So we can see his category, his type of TB, et cetera. So when the nurse comes to the record first, they can look at the overview and then they can do data collection. In this case, um, this gentleman is registered for ART. For all patients, the risk factors are carried across all, patient, all programs. In patient overview, we can get an overview of his current status, his drug regime, and then under stages, we can collect voluntary ART. If the person has the condition, then we can add ART consultations and we can see reports. In terms of the data visualization, as well as the vital signs, we've also done mapping of the CD4 results and the viral load results. M Health for Africa has introduced the use of a range of CE approved Bluetooth sensors at the point of care to measure SpO2 and pulse, so the oximeter, blood pressure, temperature, sugar levels, weight, and hemoglobin. An Android application has been developed to display the sensor readings and a HL7 fire service to pass the sensor readings to the electronic medical record via the native DHIS2 web API. So the application and the fire service interacts with the mHealth for Africa data model to undertake user authentication, retrieves and synchronizes the patient list based on the user's access rights, displays the sensor readings using Bluetooth LE within the Android device, and then when the, when the nurse clicks save, they passes the sensor readings to the electronic health record using HL7 Fire. In terms of limitation, mHealth for Africa has focused on engagement with policymakers and professional health workers in rural, deep rural, and semi-urban health facilities in Ethiopia, Kenya, Malawi, and South Africa. The programs are a superset of the requirements for these health systems. So as a result, they may not be representative of other African member states, and we're currently starting to validate this. Initially, the sample of intervention health centers was small, as it was necessary to secure external grant funding to equip them. We're now growing the number of intervention clinics. In terms of ongoing research, we're finalizing the automatic count of aggregate monthly program indicators based on patient medical records for the four intervention countries. We're providing access to SMS notifications for appointments. And in terms of interoperability, we're focused on the ability to export and import individual electronic medical records using HL7 Fire. This is something that currently isn't available through the standard DHIS tools, and it's a requirement for our um, environment. The Health for Africa Consortium brings together multidisciplinary research and innovation expertise, including human computer interaction, cross platform mobile technologies sensors for healthcare, health informatics, end user driven assessment and evaluation, and program specific expertise. I would like to take this opportunity to briefly raise awareness of the ISD Africa 2019 call for papers, which has a deadline of December 21st. Authors are invited to submit full papers of eight pages in length to be submitted online for blind peer review. ISD Africa has a full track related to technology-enabled healthcare. Thank you for your attention. We look forward to further engagement and you're welcome to send questions by email.